The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody, and happy Friday. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar on some of the what's new features for turning in Top Solid 2020 uh, version 7.14. Uh, we'll just give a few minutes here, or actually a few seconds here for people to get logged on. In the meantime, just as a reminder, if anybody has any questions during the webinar, uh, please type them into your question section of the uh, interface for GoToWebinar. Uh, I have my team online with us and they will try to help answer questions or bring them to my attention during the webinar or towards the end. And we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can as we go through here. So again, happy happy Friday. Let's uh, let's get started. So first improvement in turning for the 2020 version has to do with B-axis continuous turning. Okay. So for any of you that have a, a B-axis mill turn, good for you. Those are fun machines. Uh, if we go in here and we watch the simulation, let me slow this down a little bit. You're going to see that I'm using B-axis in continuous mode. Okay. Now, where's the improvement? We've had this function for a few years. Uh, in fact, we completely rewrote the function this year because uh, we found some areas where we needed to do some pretty good improvements. So let's start from the beginning and show you how this command now works. So first, I'm gonna say I wanna use BXS turning from that face to this face. We'll go ahead and go to finishing. I'm gonna go pick my finish tool here. Perfect. Uh, for those of you who are new to B-axis turning, it is very important that you have the driven point set to the center. Most machines require this. Um, so if you don't know how to do that, you come in here, choose your center driven point. Okay. Uh, beyond that, it's just about setting it up. So here we go. I'm gonna come into my settings here and let me minimize this for the moment so it's a little easier. Down here, you see constant cutting angles. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate constant cutting angles. Here, this is the maximum angle, angular travel of your B-axis, plus or minus. And then this is any tilting that you want. So I'm gonna say I want at minimum a five degrees tilt. And then from there, the changing angle distance. So what this is referring to is over what length of distance the B-axis will change the angle. With a very short number, the B-axis is gonna swing very fast. With a bigger number, like one inch, oops, I'm in metric, sorry. So let's say uh, 25 millimeters, the B-axis will transition more slowly, okay? So if we just watch this, we'll click okay. Here it's doing its calculation. We'll skip through to the beginning and go. And no, so right now you can see we're leaving that five degree lead angle, okay? And actually I should probably do this with the full machine so you can see what's happening more. Oops, there we go. All right, so again, I left this wide open, right? So this thing is free to do whatever it wants, but as we're going along here, you notice the B-axis head here, it's probably getting close to your sheet metal or it's driving into the sheet metal right now, which was considerably bad. So how can you adjust that? And more importantly, how can you control a B-axis continuous turning? So simple enough, you right click on the operation, under optimization, you can go to edit normal. Now this command existed before, but this is where the improvements are. You activate adding or editing normals, and now you can reset them, add additional normals, or delete normals. So for example, if I just wanted to modify these, I'm gonna have that tilted a little less, tilting that way, tilting this way, okay? And now maybe here, I wanna add a normal right there, perfect. And I wanna tilt this normal this way as well, maybe to 12. And then maybe here like so and like so. Okay, and let's see what that all looks like. Click okay. We watch our simulation and off we go. Now you have a nice clean B-axis continuous cut and you can again, add normals wherever you want. Just to point out one more thing. So let's go to optimization edit normals one more time. Um, when you go to add a normal, you can snap anywhere on 
the existing profile that the software found or use your special inputs and put it wherever you need to. So I can say point time profile, for example, and I'm gonna say right there, that's where I wanna have it. I can click okay. And maybe here I do want it to come vertical for some reason, okay? So we'll just leave it like so. This is again, just showing you that you can add normals wherever you need to add normals. And then I'll show you how to delete them as well. It's pretty cool. So here we're gonna go to vertical. Whoop. That's a fun way to scare uh, operators, by the way. All right, let's do one more quick check here. Let's say that that was a poor decision, so we wanna delete it. You just go to delete normal, select it, and go. Problem resolved. So now you have full control over normal editing. You can add, remove, turn, tweak, until you're very happy with the resulting toolpath. Cool. Let's go on to the next point. So in the next point, and it's the next couple of points actually, um, we did some significant improvements to our roughing divided by two algorithms. Okay, so I'm just getting to my notes here on my other screen. Bear with me one second here. There we go. So roughing divided by two, if we, uh, let's bring up my scenario. And let's go to the final machining stage and let's go to here. So if I go and simulate this, just to show you what's happening, right? So here, we're gonna go ahead and get past that one. And I don't know if you caught it, but both of the operations started at the same time. This is where the first improvement is. So in versions past, when you did roughing divided by two, and let's go in here to show you where it's at. Roughing divided by two, pass is divided by two, and let's expand this dialog so you can see everything more clearly. This command here didn't exist. So I'm gonna turn it off and watch down here. This is your approach moves, right? If I turn that off and I recalculate, and then we regenerate the other half, now your approach move is down here by itself, or you'd manually have to try to sync it to get it up to here. Now, you don't have to. All you have to do is choose synchronization between both operations, okay? This adds a sync at the start as well as at the end, okay? That's actually one of the points down here uh, as well. Another improvement to this command has to do with you can now play around with the driven point for that tool. Before, if you wanted to have a different driven point for the lower turret versus the upper turret, it was not really possible to manage. Now it is. So you can select here, and for example, I want the lower turret's tool to be driven by the center, let's just say. We'll click OK. And if we just simulate that side, we'll get this up here and I'll pause it. If you notice, toolpath is coming from the center key point on the lower. And if we simulate just the top side here, this is from the theoretical because that's what we have that tool set to. So again, a small little improvement uh, in case you wanna play around with how you're driving the tool on each side up the part. Uh, last improvement about the uh, roughing divided by two, it now, actually there's two more improvements. It now supports uh, constant cutting feeds. If you turn on constant surface footage, by the way, it will also automatically not let you use pocket plunge in the roughing. And again, the reason makes sense because you're at a constant surface footage. And if one of those was in a different location than another, obviously constant surface footage doesn't work properly then. So those are your final two improvements for the roughing divided by two. I hope you enjoy them. Okay, from there, next one we're gonna go to, let me minimize some of these, is uh, for part transfers, okay? So I'm gonna go to my finished sample here first. So in part transfers, for those of you that manage them with top solid, 
it used to be a little bit cumbersome to do because you always had to compensate for the driven point of the subspindle to where the driven point of your chuck actually was. Okay, so if I go and run this simulation here, Right now, you can see where I'm driving from. It's from the tip of the truck, chuck there. And if we hit N, we're wrapping up to there. We're feeding, we're grabbing, we're pulling the part back, okay? So what the improvement actually is here is a improvement to your subspindle chucks. It is now possible to define what we call a machine component that passes the driven point of the subspindle chuck into the operation so that you don't have to compensate for it. And I wanna show you how that works. So if I go to my machine component here, and a machine component, for those of you who have never created one, uh, it's quite simple. You go here, new document, we go find machine component. Oops, I think they're in advanced. There we go, machine component. Okay, you can call it what you want. This is a chuck. Uh, I'm the manufacturer, it's fantastic. And then if I take, drag my chuck in here, at this point now, it's about making two frames, okay? If I go to my construction tab here and I go to make a frame by point in two directions, for example, I want one back here. I want the Z axis going that way. Okay, and the X to Y or X to X is fine, doesn't really matter. Okay, and then I want one at my driven point up here. So I'm gonna go to my center there. Again, my Z is facing back. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to just name these so that you get the idea of what's what. So frame one, I'm gonna call this spindle frame. And I'm gonna call this transfer frame, okay? The naming's not so important, it's just so you know what's intended for what. What is important is the orientation of the frames, okay? Orientation of the frames have to follow the orientation of the frames from the machine definition. Almost all machines, they're oriented like they are right here, okay? Now, from there, we have to go to our machine tab, or our machine manager, go to elements, switch up here, and edit the ground group. When we edit the ground group, we want to make this a drivable part holder. When we make it a drivable part holder, then we have the drivable accessory here and the part holder here. Okay? Now, what's what? As this is a new command, I forgot. Not a big deal. I'm going to go look at the sample that we have here. <clears throat> Let's have a look. The mountable accessory is to put on the machine, okay? So that's this frame here. The drivable accessory is for the part transfer. That's the one up here. So let's go set that on our component. So we're gonna go here, drivable part holder. This is our spindle frame. And then our part holder, that's our transfer frame. Perfect. Now that's set, that's all we need to do. And now we can go use these. So now let's take a look at how to deploy and use these and then we'll do a part transfer together and we'll see how this new command comes together. Okay, so I'm gonna go to here. Here I have the same sample. I just have the operations on the main spindle completed. Now I wanna go ahead and add that machine component. So all you do, take your machine component and drag and drop it in. The software is going to recognize that it's a machine component. Now there's a couple of things you have to do. First, you have to choose, you want machine component, you have to choose here, whether it's part of the left chuck or the right chuck, right? So we want this on the right chuck. And then we want the workstation to be empty, right? I'm just checking my notes here, that's perfect. Okay, and then we're just gonna click okay. Like that, 
now we have added the chuck. Now, to do the part transfer, step one. Let's go to our additional tab here. We have to, of course, do a part reposition first. Make sense? So let's take our part, reposition it over here. Let's grab that to there. This is silly, obviously, what I'm doing, this part going into a collet chuck, but it's just to show you how the command needs to function. Let's align that with that. Perfect. Done. That's part of the right chuck, and we're done. Okay, so now let's do our part transfer. So to do the part transfer, we're going to go to the additional tab. This is a virtual jog command. We improved this in last year's uh, version, and the improvement for this year is obviously for that driven point of the chuck. So here we go. I want to turn on my spindle, so I'm going to activate part rotation. This way we can have some feeds and speeds. I'm going to say I want 500 RPM and how about 500 millimeters per minute? Perfect. Oh, you know what? We can be in inches. Let's go with 50 inches a minute. Now, in order to do part transfer, you need a WCS. We have not created a transfer frame yet, so let's do that. I'm going to say create on frame. I'm actually just going to use my origin frame here. Okay. For the tool holder, the tool holder is not going to be the right chuck this time. It's going to be that machine component. Remember, the machine component is what we want to drive by. So by selecting this, it's now going to drive by that point there as opposed to this point back here. What are we driving? Machine part two. What do you want to call this? This is my transfer frame. Okay, we don't need a matrix on that one. We'll click OK. So now we have our frame created. The last step now is to command the transfer. So let's go through the steps. First thing I want to do, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to hold release part. I want to go to release part on the right chuck. This is just opening the jaws. Um, most machines, you need a little bit of a delay here. It takes a couple seconds, so let's say give it two second delay. Now we're going to approach to hold the part. Okay, and now here's where the improvement is. For example, I want to approach, but be one inch off of here in rapid. Then I want to go to zero or a negative value by how much you want to grab the part by. In this case, I'm just putting it right on the face. Okay. Boom. And it's perfectly positioned. Again, for those of you doing transfers in Top Solid 7, last year you had to compensate for the distance between the driven point of your chuck and the driven point of the spindle. So from here, now we can go ahead and hold on. So we want to hold on the sub spindle or right chuck. Again, I'm going to put that delay in there. Now we want to release on the main. One more delay, dwell, whatever you want to call it. And then from here, we can do part transfer. That's it. Now, if we run the simulation, here you can see rapiding, right? I'm going to hit N on my keyboard to skip to the next move. So we're in rapid right now. Now it's going to feed, and now it's going to rapid back. Part transfer complete with the correct driven point of your subspindle holder. So you can make a library of machine components for all your different chucks, collet chucks, three jaw, four jaw chucks, special chucks, whatever you're using, and be driving it all by the correct point to make part transfer simpler. Another improvement to the platform is that you can now create a method for part transfers. Okay, you couldn't do that before either. So those of you who like to write automation in Top Solid using methods, I'm gonna just bring up a picture of this. I'm not gonna go over it today. In your methods, you can now do a search for drivable part support right here. So it will find the correct driven point automatically so that off you go creating your automation. Okay, cool. Let's keep on moving here. All right, another small improvement on the turning uh, level here has to do with collision checking. So let's go have a look at this. 
Um, for those of you using Top Solid to drive milling tool paths, you're used to the dynamic collision points that pop up now. By default, this is active on all turning tool paths as well. So if we come in here, come into your settings here. Oops, let me expand this so that you guys can see everything. Right here is your calculation of collision points and how you're calculating it. Okay, so we wanna leave that active. Right now, you see no collision points. Let's do something silly. Let's say we wanna leave minus one millimeter. Okay, so now you see all the little red dots showcasing where the tool is colliding. Uh, it works all sorts of different ways. So if I say 0.5 and let's say we go into our settings um, and let's go to our plunge, let's do a negative five degrees here. You'll see also a collision point. So that's just showing you that you are turning with the back of the tool, which is no bueno. Set that back to zero, collision point goes away, off you go. Okay, so a nice little improvement. It just gives you more real-time feedback for where you might potentially be doing that. Individual jog as well. Josh, yes, is the answer. Oh, I see that Joe answered that. So th the question was, can you add spindle sync RPM in the virtual jog as well? And yes is the answer. You just add the M code for spindle sync in there. I skipped it obviously in the demonstration, but just call the M code for it and off you go. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. Close out of that. So we've added some optimizations in retracts now. Let's go have a look. So here we have kind of a fun part. On this part, you can see there is a crazy uh, undercut groove that needs to be machined. Okay. If we go and watch verify on this, we'll go ahead and hit play. You're seeing it's doing its thing. And if you notice, when this tool is working, and let me pause this, go into this mode, you can see how it's retracting. It's retracting along the tool axis, which is this way in this case. Okay, and what's really great about it is there's nothing special that you have to do. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go get out of here. I'll delete this and we'll recreate this tool path together. So I wanna machine from there, no, excuse me, from there to here. We'll go to finishing. This is a grooving style insert or profiling style insert, okay? Um, here we're driving the tool by the center as well. And now if we go into our settings, a couple things we're gonna do, I'm gonna come into here, I wanna be optimized. And already, as soon as I turn that on, you'll notice that it is pulling out along the same vector, okay? Now, maybe I wanna play with my lead and lead outs a little bit. Here, you don't have to come up with this angle yourself. All the changes you make, just update. So for example, uh, if I go here and say that I want a 0.25 millimeter radius and a 0.25 millimeter uh, lead distance, okay? And I want similar in and out. You can see the vectors are always maintained, okay? And off you go. All right. Now, this next one is gonna lead us into a discussion of some brand new technology as well. Um, this one is called Change Part Holder. And it's actually pretty awesome. So in this sample, all my operations are on the main spindle, right? But maybe for one reason or another, I wanna move this to be performed on the sub spindle. So in versions past, you would have to really delete this and then go recreate it on the other part or go in and edit this, change which part it's referencing, change a bunch of things to go to the other side. So we wanted to make that simpler. And the reason we wanted to make that simpler is not just for machines like this, it is primarily for machines we're gonna talk about here in a minute, Swiss style machines. Let's have a look. So new command is like this. I wanna be first of all in my machining final stage. And then I want to have my scenario visible, okay? Again, all of these are on the main spindle, right? I'm gonna zoom up here a little bit. I wanna go to my groove roughing, 
right? I want to right mouse button click, and now notice you have a new command called change part holder. I want to put that operation on the subspindle. One click, it's recalculating, and it's going to be on the subspindle. Just like that. And now you can see it's over here. Okay? Now, Another improvement for turning, I don't have it in my list, but it just popped into my brain. Um, let's go, let's go to, uh, let's go to here. I think I can show it on this one. All right, so we're back to here where we have two channels, right? Um, we've had requests to be able to run uh, verify from or with this scenario. Couldn't do that before. Now you can. The way that that works, you have to be in, again, the machining funnel stage. You come down to your scenario, and here you'll see simulate using verify. Okay? And if my memory is good, we go to verify now. And we should be able to see. Nope, I did something wrong. Oh, because I'm dumb. You launch it from here using the scenario. So, you know, that gets all, that gets all of us sometimes. There you go. Now it's waiting. And now you have verify with scenario. Okay? It's kind of cool. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and stop that. Let's quit. We'll close that and we'll talk about the final small point for improvements in turning for Top Solid 2020. And that, my friends, is the support of Swiss style mill turn machines. We have been working on this for a number of years and officially are happy to announce that we support Swiss style turning. Okay. There were quite a few improvements made over the past few years over how these types of machines are supported. Uh, this year's one of the major improvements had to do with gang holders. For example, this would be considered a gang holder. So in our machine definitions, it's now significantly simpler for us to define what these tool holders are, what they need to be, how they work, here, 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 everywhere. Um, this is a great example of a very, very crazy Swiss style machine. You can see this thing is loaded with tooling, right? If we look at the kinematic of this, we'll just say that uh, when you want to know how many axes there are, this has all of them. <laughs> it has all of them and then some, okay? So if I move some around, you can see there's one axis. Here's a Z2 axis here for the turret. You have your C axis on the main spindle. You have your Y axis then on this turret as well. Up here, this is for setting the angle of this tool. Kind of cool. And so on. You see that you have everything. Now, if I go in here and I run a simulation. So we're gonna go ahead and hit play. And we're gonna see this thing get moving. And you can see, it is doing all operations. Maybe this is better from this view. It's a tight little machine. But you can see the, the head is moving the material correctly over here. This operation's waiting for the sink to come up, telling it where to go. So here we're driving a three channel machine. But I think you guys get the idea. So. As far as operations are concerned, these are just simple turning operations, simple milling operations. What makes it unique is the style of machine, the kinematic of the machine. So you gotta pay attention to what part is being driven where, you gotta pay attention to what frame is where. Um, there, there's a lot, but now thankfully, you can support these types of machines inside of Top Solid. Now, as they say, the proof is in the pudding, so let's go ahead and generate G code for this as well. We're gonna come down here to Citizen, M32, and we'll hit go. 
notice when we post for this, it's asking all sorts of fun questions because again, crazy machines Swiss machines are. So here it's asking for all key parameters that you would have to set to drive this correctly. Click OK. Off we go. Let's go ahead and look at that code. And this is ready to rock and drive that machine. We're going to do a more in-depth look at Swiss turning later on in the year. As I said, this is a, a new type of machining that's supported by Top Solid. So we're going to take our time, make sure that we document and do things correctly for everybody. But hopefully you enjoy this first sneak peek. Okay. That is all of the what's new features for at least the major features for uh, turning for this year. Is there anyone with any additional questions right now? I'd be happy to do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, I can say thank you for attending today. And as always, this uh, recording, uh, the, there'll be a recording of this video. It'll be posted to the blog.topsolid.com under the What's New section here, probably by later this afternoon or worst case, uh, Monday morning. All right, I don't see any questions coming in. So happy Friday, everyone. Again, thanks for attending. Um, we'll be making announcements early next week for the next series of webinars we'll be hosting. They will be more focused on specific aspects of Top Solid. Hope to see you guys uh, on future webinars. Have a great day.